on 31, let's keep on practicing composition of functions. Again, analytically, I have some formulas to plug into, but I wanna address that domain idea again, and this one's gonna be even that much more complicated because both of these have domain issues, right? They're both fractions, so I have a problem. I can't plug zero into G, and I can't plug negative four in for F, and we'll have to see how that plays out when we compose these functions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna compose the functions, and then we'll have a chat about the domains. All right, so let's try this one. We need to do f of g of x. So I need to start with my innermost function, which is two over x. So I have f of two over x. Ooh, that doesn't look that great. There we go. All right, and with that, now my two over x becomes my input into the f function, so this is five and then we have two over x plus four. All right, now we've done the composition of function parts. The rest that's out there is the algebra. And we tend to not like algebra, especially when it deals with fractions. So let's go ahead and address that, all right? I wanna get rid of this fraction that's in the denominator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by the LCD. And so this is secretly over one. So I'm gonna multiply the numerator by x and I'm gonna multiply the denominator by x. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You can simplify this by adding the fractions first, but you're ultimately gonna do the same thing I do, just maybe in a different form. So here we go. I'm gonna multiply these fractions, so I multiply the numerators and I multiply the denominators. So if I multiply the numerators, I'm gonna have 5x. If I multiply the denominators, be careful. There is a binomial here, all right? So I have to distribute this. x times two over x is gonna be two, and x times four is four x. All right, and that looks better, right? I don't have that fraction that's in the denominator. So at this point, I figured out that f of g of x is equal to five x over two plus four x. All right. Now let's have a conversation about domain. So the first thing I needed to worry about is my initial g of x function, right? So when I was plugging into a rex, the domain for g of x, all right? We know it's everything but zero. And I say it's everything but zero because I do have a fraction and it zeroes out when zero is in the denominator. So I'm just gonna start to take note. I know x can't equal zero, I'll write it up in interval notation and in a little bit. And then you wind out, or it winds up with this fraction in the denominator. So the next thing I need to do is figure out when this fraction's denominator zeroes out. So let me put some work here. So I would do when is two plus four x equal to zero? Well, that would be when four x was equal to negative two. That's when x is equal to negative one half. So there's the other number that I can't have in my domain. So I actually need to rule out zero and negative one half. And I'm not gonna use the not equals to symbols, I'm gonna use interval notation. So my domain for this problem is gonna be negative infinity, and then the smallest number I come across is negative one half, and then negative one half to zero, and then zero to infinity. So I need to throw out two answers or not two answers, two x values from my domain. But I start with the domain of my innermost function, right? I ruled out zero. I take that innermost function, apply it to f, see what pops back out, and then I have to reevaluate the domain for this new f of g of x. And once this popped out, I also had to throw out negative one half from my domain. Okay, and one thing I just wanna mention, maybe you weren't thinking, oh, I'm gonna multiply by um, x over x. I wanna just show you a different way to get to that solution. If, if that one made, maybe this will make a little bit more sense in your head or maybe this is how you would have done it. So here's what I'm trying to reference. If I had, I believe we had, let me write this. Let me just try writing this a different way. Give me a moment. All right, this is where we left off, okay. 
Let's say you didn't think to multiply the numerator and denominator by x over x. Some of you might have just said, well, I need to simplify my denominator, which is fine. I just want you to see these will come to the same answer. It's just gonna take you a little longer. So you might say this was two over x plus four over one, and you multiply this one only by x over x because you wanna get common denominators. Again, totally legit. So this becomes five, and in the denominator you have two over x, and now you have 4x over x, okay? On the denominator, I have two fractions, but they have common denominators, so I can add their numerators. So I'm gonna get two plus four x over x, okay, great. Now this becomes five divided by two plus four x over x, and we've talked about dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So I get five times x over two plus four x. And still, this is five over one, so I multiply the numerators and I multiply the denominators. And I wind up with the exact same expression as I did up here. Or I should say when I was do using my initial method to do it, right? We still get five x over two plus four x either way. I would just argue this was faster. Right, I'll just multiply numerator and denominator by x to knock out this, this denominator. Here you were just simplifying the fractions on the denominator only and then multiplying by reciprocals. It just took a little bit longer, but we all got there, okay? All right, so again, when you're composing functions, find the domain of the innermost function, all right? If you have to rule something out, okay, start that list and then Find the outermost function, right? F your g of x, and then see what else you want to add to this list. And we're always starting from all real numbers and then knocking things down from there. All right, so this was f of g of x. Let's go the other way. Let's go g of f of x and see what we wind up with. So I'm going to scooch this up. All right, let's see how we're doing with this. So if I want to do g of f of x, all right, so f is my innermost function, so this is going to be g over, or g of, excuse me, 5 over x plus 4, okay? And then g of x says do 2 over that number, or over that expression. Okay, so now I have a complex fraction, no problem. I'm going to do 2 divided by 5 over x plus 4, which is like saying 2 times x plus 4 over 5. Okay, so I'm going to multiply numerators, keeping in mind this numerator is a binomial. And the denominators, that's secretly 1, so we have 1 times 5, which is 5. So that's a completely acceptable way of writing the answer. But I do want to extend upon this and show you alternate ways of writing this. So you could write this also as 2 fifths times x plus 4. All right, those are equivalent expressions. You also could have distributed the two-fifths and wrote this as two-fifths x plus eight-fifths. So ultimately, you see it's just the equation of a line. And that's probably the way I'm going to end it. Um, I'm going to talk about how the slope was two-fifths and the y-intercept was zero eight-fifths. So we know that g of f of x, again, not multiplication, was equal to two-fifths x plus eight-fifths. Oops, let me make that a fraction. Now, we still need to talk about domain. So let's start with our innermost function and make our list, right? We're starting initially from all real numbers and we're gonna see what we have to throw out. So when I look at five over x plus four, I have a fraction. I cannot let the denominator equal zero and that happens when x is equal to negative four. So I'm gonna to have to, again, throw this out of domain. And that's fine. Now, let's take a look at what happened when we got done with our function. We had this, this was our g of f of x. Okay, we did have fractions, but you'll take note that the denominators are never zero because the denominators are constant. Okay, I don't have any radicals and I don't have any logarithms, so I don't pick up any new issues with my domain. The only thing I'm gonna have is this x equaling negative four, so my domain in this case is negative infinity to negative four, and then negative four to infinity, right? So I was starting with all real numbers, 
but I was giving the boot to negative four, okay? So with that, we've taken a look at composing functions, whether it was g of f, f of g, and we've talked about their domains, right? You start with the domain of the innermost function, start making your list, see what you can add to after you add your outer function. So with that, we're gonna do, we're gonna work ourselves a little bit backwards. We're gonna decompose some composite functions and that will round out uh, section 3.3. So I'll see you in a few, bye.